Good morning, mate. Good morning, mate. It's very early, it's very cold. This is Aussie Racer. Ride with us. It's before sunrise. Dot up girls are told to pose on a sandy racetrack, and I'm faced with the inevitable. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> Practicing the left and right, mate. Today is the race from Alice to Fink. Some 230 kilometres of sand, whoops, and more whoops. Which, in a big dollar car with decent suspension, would be alright. But personally, our patrol is like a rattleboard. One day, I'll get to race one of those bad boys, which have already started their run to Fink. But for now, it's this headspace. Fink, ready to go and get thrown around like I'm in a tumble dryer for about three hours. Now, don't get me wrong, I love racing. That's why we do this show. But driving to Fink and back in a patrol that's done 14 years of competition isn't exactly an easy task. There is so much wear and tear in this car that pre-race prep time is enormous. And we never really know when fatigue becomes too much for some of these parts. Making it to the end of this race is truly going to be a mission. Don't say chicken! Chicken! <laughs> that feeling of uncertainty can encourage some of my issues to surface. Anywho, we're at the start line and I'm going to try and explain this race the best I can. Let's first get underway. It's going to be a long drive. theory when it comes to off-road racing, the hardest thing about these events is finishing. Fink's attrition rate is over 50%, meaning less than half the cars that start make it over the finish line. And this track is one of the most brutal on the national off-road circuit. Combine those elements with the fact we're in a 14-year-old race car and you can begin to understand how careful we need to be to preserve our equipment and make it to Fink and back. On the other hand, Freddie and Michelle are in a brand new car with a lot less power, so they have to focus more on making it within the time limit rather than nurturing their equipment because it's old and seasoned. Right, we've both made it off the line with no issues, something that's rare for us, and have a chance to open it up before the track starts getting rougher and the famous whoops come into play. As the 130-ish cars make their way down to Fink, all of the moto riders are psyching themselves up for the next two days of punishment this track will bestow upon them. Uh, yeah, so me and uh, David Walsh take off uh, on the first line, on the first grid, so hopefully we just get a good jump on him, uh, get into the front, and we can take it from there, see what happens then. So we're just going to try and stay full gas and, and uh, get down the other end safely. Toby does get the jump on David Walsh and is settling in to a long and painful run down to Fink. Currently, he's showing no sign that his busted foot is going to slow him down. Ivan didn't quite get the jump on his start, so Dust is plaguing him right from the get-go. Toby's going so fast that his kit changes colour. That's because he can't wear cameras while racing. So with editing magic, we now have Toby ripping towards Fink in mellow yellow. Ivan hasn't backed off at all, and both himself and Ty Simmons are firmly holding their positions just a few spots behind Toby. Bill and myself are being belted around as predicted, and we haven't even hit the start of the dunes yet. This track is mesmerising. It sucks you in, and the dust disguises what's in front of you. 
And in that instant... We land in the front side of a whoop, hitting hard and sending a shock through the car and through our bodies. There's a noise in the front end and I can feel we've lost drive to those wheels. Something has broken for sure. Damn, now we're in a pickle. This is not good. We have to get the front hubs unlocked to stop any more damage. So we drag ourselves over the 40k dune and pull over for a little assistance. Unlock the hubs. Unlock the hubs. Unlock the hubs. Unlock the hubs. Can you unlock the hubs for us? No. Thank you. Cheers, guys. We pull straight out into more dust and drop behind another team. Great. This is where my philosophy of racing Fink comes into play. The whoops are like a time bomb for machinery. The changing track gives you a feeling of confidence when it has a smooth section. Then the whoops themselves send you into a trance-like state. The changing track gives you a feeling of confidence when it has a smooth section. It's all too easy to relax for a moment. Then that one slight mistake can end it all. It is so cool. <laughs> Right now, we've got a smash front drive line and I'm having to back off to preserve the car. If that's not enough of an underlying stress, I can assure you the Gremlins of Motorsport will have their part. Our motor has just cut out. No warning, nothing. That was it, we shut down. I don't know what happened here. Do you want to get out? Yep. Um, it's highly likely. Right, mate. Just stop for quiet. Let's find this problem. I'll have a two second wee while we're here. Okay, so this is annoying. I've checked all the ECU, fuses, relays, fuel connections, I've flicked switches, nothing showing signs of not working. So she kicks over again. And cuts out again. I'm not complaining, I'm just Could have been different. Could have been my baby. So we've lost 11 minutes mucking around. Cars have been passing us non stop. We need to get moving and nurse the car to Fink so we can fix all this broken stuff tonight. Get him on, get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on. Get him on, get him on, get him on.
Places haven't changed, and he's keeping his KDM tapped to stay on top of the whoops. Ty Simmons is pushing along, and dust has prevented him from moving up any places. With a busted front end and the engine cut out gremlin, it felt like we were dragging our feet to the finish line. I can't even hold the accelerator to the floor, as that encourages the engine to stall. At least we've managed the issues and can keep the car running and hopefully make it to the end. <laughs> Top runners are on the home stretch, with the roads car only a minute and a half ahead of the Aussie champions, Shannon and Ian Wrench. We've used close to 170 litres of fuel, so the car's feeling decidedly lighter, the gremlins are holding back, and we're smelling the finish line. We are so grateful to be making it to the end of day one. I can't help but opening it up a bit down the last straight. It's what racers do. absolutely dominating his run and looks to be holding a six minute lead over second place. When the riders belt through those final turns coming into Fink, everyone knows they have an obligation to send it for the crowd. Ivan's chasing hard and always keen for some air, so He's up for it. And Ty's not holding back either. These guys are amazing to watch. So Bill and I are here in Fink. We've had a little minute to have a have a sandwich. A little bit of a calm down. A bit of a wide ride in. We did break some bits in the front end, like I suggested. We popped a freewheeling hub, and underneath here, it looks like we may have exploded a CV or something, so we'll uh, get around to fixing that. We're waiting for our crew to come in. Freddy and Michelle actually timed out. They didn't quite get to the halfway, halfway marker in time, so they have to come the road in. They get to start again tomorrow. We get to start again tomorrow. And uh, I think that from what we can tell, we're about third across the line in class, so pretty happy with that. The crew rocks up, afternoon's work commences, and as we fly over to the KDM pits, we see Ivan and Ty filtering through, and everyone is still buzzing from the time on their bikes. I had one good moment, and about the right hand off, and just held on this side. The boys need to cool down, and after such a tough run, racers have priorities. For Toby... Hey! Is that good milk for me? Yeah. Yes. Chocolate milk. No. It's chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. So do you want to redo that tape or do you want to leave it? Time's good. It's the toughest section probably I've done down the track. Um, oh, but usually it's like bang something up or by the time I get here and then I've got to try and preserve myself yeah. getting back. Yeah. But time doesn't start until you're in. This is yeah, on the way. Sick. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Chalky milk. Thank you. Ivan starts enduring his long ice bath. Some local kids think he's crazy and we all get a glimpse into seeing some of the tough routines athletes need to keep themselves performing in such tough conditions. Second place is David Walsh, who's just six minutes behind Toby. And Ivan's eating David's dust just 30 seconds in the chase. Ty had a great run, coming in only four seconds behind Ivan, but still feels dust held him back. Yeah, it was a bit of pain, but um, we got through, stayed on, which is good. Had a lot of, a lot of crazy, stupid moments, but um, that's the way it goes, so. The team gets to wind down 
and Toby just needs to focus his energy on some chill time in preparation for another painful day on the bike. Rest up, stay off it, and then we'll be good. That's not fun. As we've said, he is one tough unit. Back at our camp, the tools are out and the crew's quickly discovering how much damage I've done to the front end. We've got a few things to fix. At about the 30k marker, we did happen to blow the front end out of it, so oh, we're going to start pulling a whole lot of lot apart and seeing what uh, what we need to fix. And the boys have just found some more stuff here, all of it. But now the now the long haul really begins, fixing the car and getting it back to the start line for the morning. Everything is coming apart, and we end up having to borrow a diff centre from Bill's tow car, a CV from Breddy's car, and I had a freewheeling hub. All the parts bags were raided. And this is one of those moments where the crew's determination shows through and we somehow manage to start getting towards a working race car again. We've got to get this one back in before the sun goes down so then we can just relax for a bit. Mate, they are Department of Transport oh, and put them on. Advertise. Put them on. Baja Bill's mechanically inept, so it's an easy night for him. Mate, that was, um, that was the most amazing thing I've ever done. It was uh, to hear the talk, but to actually be in the car and to be going through all the whoops they are just phenomenal. There are some faster sections, but uh, generally pretty rough, and it comes up really quick. With all that happening, Freddie's still wondering why they timed out when they were well within the cutoff for Fink. Uh, we had a pretty good run. We got to the 140k mark, but unfortunately we were 15 minutes late in getting there, so they said uh, we don't have enough time to make it to Fink. So they uh, sent us down the uh, access road. But up until then, car was going like a dream. We thought we were, uh, we're on it, we are checking our times, we were well within making it within four hours, but unfortunately uh, officials uh, decided we couldn't. Though team spirits are still up as everyone's showing the love. Hi Michelle, how are you going? I'm Petri, I'm having a tan tea! And the final touches are done on the car just as the sun leaves us for the night. That'll do, I reckon. What's better, beautiful sunset, desert racing, motorbikes, buggies, it's awesome. We're all a bit tired, but we're gonna have some dinner and a rest and get pumped for the run back to Alice Springs tomorrow morning. <laughs>